Welcome, welcome back to another episode of Uploaded and Unfiltered, the podcast in which I, your host, Jermaine, aka Kryptonite, talks to another creator in regards to their journey thus far. Tonight, my special guest is Kohlberg9. I'm going to go ahead and read his bio and introduce him and uh, get him on the podcast so we can chop it up. Kohlberg9 runs a wrestling e-fed on Twitch through WWE 2K, known as the Main Academy Wrestling Federation. His community, as well as his streamer friends, created wrestler versions of themselves in the game and then have CPU versus CPU battles with their superstars. The group does commentary for the matches and creates storylines for all the characters. They also have a space in the Discord for the superstars to roleplay and cut promos on each other. It's a really fun time. Kohlberg shares a community with Blue Satire and both have fostered a very inclusive community that they strive each and every day to keep safe. He also hosts a reality talk show called Who's Next, where he sits down and has conversation with streamers who he feels are the next big names on Twitch. He continues to use his space to highlight other creators and push them to higher heights. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce my guest for the evening, Kohlberg9. Welcome to the podcast. How you doing tonight? And I am pretty good. I had a pretty eventful work day today, but I'm happy to be here kicking with you, enjoying these vibes, and uh, I appreciate you for having me on. Hell yeah, man. I'm glad you can do it. And I, every time I do one of these episodes, I always think, like, what's the initial thought that people, like, goes through people's head, like, when they first hear the guest? And I, I guarantee you, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but when they heard your voice, they were like, oh, god damn. What? Hold <laughs> on. <laughs> let me tune in. Yeah. Let me uh, turn this up a bit. <laughs> no, <I'm> just, <laughs> I think I, I just wanted to throw that out there. I think one of the first things that like got me when I came to your stream is when you started talking, I was like, this is not this man's voice. He has a goddamn <laughs> filter on. But no, that's your voice. It's dope. That I love it. me, man. This is me. <laughs> <laughs> well, without further ado, I need to know because I am always interested in my my streamer friends background, like how people got mm -hmm. started. I right, definitely right. need to know your origin story. So if you can bless us with that information, how did you get started in content creation? So my origin story goes back to early, say, 2019. Um, I was actually in a group me group. I know that's old for some. Oh, wow. People. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> but I was in group me with some homies and this guy, Blue Satire, was just randomly one day said, hey, if I started streaming on Twitch, would y'all watch? And I'm all about supporting my people. Uh, so I was like, yeah, absolutely. Go for it. So he started streaming. He and I, you know, worked together to help build his community. We got a chance to know other creators out uh, in this space. And, you know, I was happy and content with being a best supporting actor. I, I didn't want to be in the spotlight. I never felt like I was interesting enough to have my own stream. So being a number one supporter was something that I enjoyed doing. Mm -hmm. uh, just being in his space and sometimes often uh, being in Discord with him while he streamed because uh, he was trying to get his legs, trying to get comfortable. You know, it's kind of hard when you don't really have people there right. to talk to and you need somebody to talk to. So I was always in his ear talking and po people were always like, yo, who's that? Who's that guy? You know, he's <laughs> yeah. funny. So they eventually, you know, you know I, I was his moderator and I, you know, was a mod for him for about a year before I even considered going live for the first time. Of course, you know, I'm one of those COVID babies. COVID hit, you know, we're stuck at home, nothing to do. And I was like, you know what? Why not? Let's let's just try it. So I uh, started streaming. My very first stream was WWE 2K20, a game that I will no longer acknowledge that exists <laughs> because it was terrible. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and I just, you know, spat off wrestling knowledge as I uh, played through universe mode uh, as different characters. And uh, my very first stream, I had like over 20 people in there because I had made so many connections. Right. Uh, being on that journey with Blue as his moderator and follow him around to different streams, getting to know people, just doing like love raids where we would go visit just random streamers and just go show love, just going there throwing bits, going there, you know, gifting subs, mm -hmm. uh, just kind of show love on the platform. Because, you know, there was during a time where, you know, a lot of hate was going on and people were doing like all the hate raids and stuff. Right. So we were trying to do the opposite. So first string, you know, over 20 people, no cam, using my headset as my mic. Just okay. terrible. It was a terrible time. <laughs> <laughs> but it was also a really good time. And it kind of opened my eyes, 
you know, to the possibilities of, of being a, a real streamer. Because when I started my streams, I called them fake streams. They were all fake stream this, <laughs> fake stream that, I and I numbered that. all of them. Right. So once I finally got my PC and got my setup, they started becoming real streams. And now we're, sh- man, we're, <laughs> we've had a, a ton of real streams. Exactly. Uh, so far. So yeah, we, we've been out here for a little minute. Coming up on three years. Well, we just passed three years, actually. We're coming up on four years now. Yeah, when that bug bites you, you know, you're like, you know what? This is actually pretty fun. I like doing this. Yeah, let me, let yeah. me explore this a, a bit. Time. It's been a good time. <laughs> well, from origin story to current situation, how is the current world or mouth, or not even just mouth, just yo content in general? How are you feeling about it? Where's your current mindset sitting when you think back and look at your content and when you need to put something up? Where are you sitting with that right now? Well, I mean, I think you said it right the first time because honestly, uh, you know, this streaming journey has, you know, enlightened me to a lot of things. And originally I was always calling myself a variety streamer because I did play a lot of different games. Mm -hmm. But here recently I've decided to come become a lot more intentional uh, with the content that I'm putting out. I don't want to just stream because originally, you know, I was using my streams as a getaway. Yes. You know, I had a tough day at work. I want to just vibe out with my friends. So let's just go live. But now I'm a little bit more intentional about the content that I put out. And I am now a wrestling commentator and talk show host as opposed to a variety. Because now I go live with a purpose. I go live to create a product that people, you know, feel like they can't miss. Right. So because there's so many people out here that are just playing games. So many people out here doing you know, some of the same things that others are doing. I want to be, you know, and I'm not saying that, you know, I'm the only person out here running an EFED, but I want to have an EFED that is a must watch that if you miss an episode, if you miss an hour, you felt like you missed a lot. And that's what I've been trying to put out here on the platform uh, with the main Academy Wrestling Federation. That's what my current mindset is right now. You know, same with Who's Next. I've been highlighting a lot of uh, creators with my Who's Next talk show. We Mm -hmm. are in our fifth season of Who's Next. I want to. I want people to feel like they need to be there because I've been trying to make sure I'm highlighting, you know, some of the dopest streamers out there that I enjoy watching the content that I enjoy consuming because I feel like if I enjoy watching you, then I can I can promote that because yeah. I know exactly what I need to ask you in order to highlight you in the best possible light, uh, so that other people be like, "Damn, I need to check this person out because they're they sound like they're dope." Exactly. Uh, that's what I. That's my current mindset when it comes to creating. Now I want to go live with a purpose and not go live just because I'm bored. If I want to do that, I'll just do it in Discord now. Right? Hell yeah! You know, like there's something two two points here that you made that I I feel like I need to point out. <laughs> <laughs> when you switch your content to being more intentional, that's a whole like bunch of choices that you don't need to even worry about anymore. You know what content you're about to do now. You just keep right. laser focusing on that, and it right. shows like. I can't tell you how many times during the FNF stream, we're about to fight Street Fighter or whatever. And boss is like, hold up, I'm about to fight. And we're like, what? Oh, Mom. Okay. <laughs> we switch over to your stream and we watch we watch the match. Like we he does not miss that shit. It you did it, bro. Like it happens. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that was like the exact point right there. Uh and Boss is not the only creator that, that does it. If someone like uh the homie Wildline is curl, she's one of our newest superstars from this season. She's also a part of the circus, which, you know, of course, has been one of our top stories. We're, yeah. the, we're the bloodline of uh, mouth right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, she does the same exact thing. Someone will lurk in my stream while she's live to only to let her know when it's time for her match so that she oh, can pop goodness. over and watch, you know, and it's been such a dope time, you know, had, pr- being able to create that must-see content uh, definitely makes me feel good because unlike WWE, I don't have the luxury of the live crowd, so I don't mm-hmm. know exactly what's working based right. on the pop or the booze or whatever. I have to rely on chat. You know, I have to see that chat move. Like if I'm at a point where I'm into the match and I'm calling it and I just see the chat just going crazy, that's yeah. my pop. That's, that's when I realize, awesome. okay, now I'm cooking, you know? So I've been having to rely on that a lot. And it's been good. It's been really good, man. People have been enjoying these stories I'm trying to tell and uh, they've been really buying into the product. Bro, I, again, I said this before we jumped in the cast, but I love that you're doing this and the passion that you have for it and everybody that's helping out with it. Like, yeah, it shows like it's like, I again, boss is my because I'm going to say it for the last time. I'm going to say it again. I forgot to put my application in. That's my fault. (laughs) 
he he likes <laughs> to remind me of that shit. And I'm mad, man. Like this year, I'm mad because last year we was whooping ass, man. I was doing shit, and then I just oh, yeah. forgot. And this whole clown, like the the whole circus thing, I love it. I want to be a clown so bad, but anyways, <laughs> you know, it's just like the effort that you're putting in is is, is showing in folks. Like what? Not to, not that I want you to like detail it out, but like, do you have any future plans or future ideas that you haven't yet executed on that you're you're waiting to do? Well, we're looking to introduce a new faction, and we've been kind of hinting at it because you know the circus came along. They were cooking. They were the one of the more dominant forces. Win or lose, they are one yeah. of the more dominant forces here on the uh, on the brand. Uh, we've also we introduced a character that we called the Stranger, that no one had any idea who this character was. He was we deemed him as Ground Zero for what we were calling the Clown Curse, as if Balsu had the ability to uh, transfer this. Uh, clown persona to other superstars. He's actually yeah. who infected, you know, Wild Lioness Curls, who goes by Chaotic Curls in the Mouth Universe. He bit uh, one of our superstars, uh, the Minty King Josh, and Josh also became a clown. Uh, and it's funny that you said you wanted to be a clown so bad because there's a, a spinoff show or another show called uh, Square Conversations. Okay, that's ran by uh, my friend Creole King Kenny. So he reviews WWE news for the week, but he also reviews Mouth news for the week as well and he said you know everybody's trying to figure out who the stranger is but one person we never considered y'all remember when Balsu joined the main academy wrestling federation they used to be a trio <gasps> he said we we've seen Balsu, oh. we've seen chris panda oh <laughs> what? we haven't seen kryptonite so is chris hey. the stranger hey and hey. people ran with it. They was like, oh my God, hey. I never even thought about that. That is so <laughs> dope. I, I'm i excited as shit right now. I did not know this. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. You were uh, a suspect as the identity for the stranger. That is um, But as far as the new faction goes that we're introducing, because the circus went on their run. I mean, there's they are still on the tear. They're still one of our more dominant forces, but I didn't want them to get stale. Right. So I haven't been using them as much as I was before. So we're introducing a new faction called the Coven, where we just Ooh. recently signed this dark superstar. We're calling her the Queen of Horror. Okay. And she came in and she ended the career of one of our superstars. And I used that particular superstar because uh, we had a creator who was managing like two superstars. It became overwhelming for her. She was like, look, if there's something you could do to get rid of this superstar, go for it. And I was like, perfect. I yeah. know the exact person I can have to, you know, take this superstar out. And she's introducing what we like to call the coven. So it's going to be like a group of witches and warlocks. That Hell will be yeah. The Man Wrestling Federation next. Yo, I thank you for that. I know that's probably <laughs> some not exclusive. Like, again, Everybody who has not heard of this wrestling federation, if that doesn't get you interested in it, like I don't I don't know what will. Like what the fuck? <laughs> like the thing that I think is magical about it is it's all community members, it's all streamers oh, yeah. friends that are the characters and everybody's right. buying for their character. They got their own situations going. They be talking shit on Twitter, like Yeah, and, and there's a reason for that because to be completely honest, to be one hundred percent transparent, mm -hmm. my community is not full of wrestling fans there are a majority of my community members that don't care about wrestling at all they don't even know who roman reigns is that's, they don't okay care. that's wild that's a little wild <laughs> that is very wild but it's so true yes. there's a community member that i discovered had not consumed any wrestling content in her life until she started watching mouth and now she doesn't miss an episode she's one of the first people there every time that i have a community amazing. that is full of simmers but you know what simmers love to do they love to create. Yes. They love to create. So having a community full of simmers, I have to find a way to keep them interested in the product. So why would I sign or why would I feature a, a Stone Cold or a Rock? Yeah, those are some of our favorites, but those mm -hmm. people don't care about Stone Cold and the Rock. You know who they care about? The Mad Clown Boss Who. Exactly. They care about a Macho Glint. They care about Blue Cam, Smooth Johnson. They care about these people because they see these people in the community every day. Yeah. So it's like they're rooting for their friends. Oh my god. That I couldn't have said it better. Like that's amazing that you created something, put it out in the world that is having this type of effect on people. That okay, that's that's awesome. That's that's what we're chasing. Like something that right, exactly. is evergreen, something that you can put out that is like making people happy. 
changing it like that's crazy good shit man <laughs> i appreciate it man it's, it's been a, it's been a hard journey but it's been a fun one because so many people want to help so many people want to contribute now i appreciate it now it can get overwhelming sometimes because a lot of people try to find a space where they can help mm-hmm. and you know a lot of times it may not be necessary but right. i appreciate the effort nonetheless because people do want to see mouth grow people do want to see mouth expand so i appreciate all i appreciate all the help i've been receiving yeah. but sometimes it can you know get overwhelming and daunting when you have to tell somebody no when mm-hmm. they want to pitch something that you know doesn't really make sense or that you feel like wouldn't work and it's not because you don't want the help it's just because you know it's not the vision that you want or the vision that I want for you know what I'm promoting at the time, so mm-hmm. it's, it's been tough because you know I've had to I've had to say no, I've had, I've had to hurt feelings before, and like you know, but of course in a respectful way, and you know, hey, I appreciate this. However, mm-hmm. we can't. <laughs> yes, and shout like good on you for sticking to your guns. I think that's one of the hardest things to do once you really start creating content is deviating from your initial vision uh, mm-hmm. because like some people see success in that they're like oh if i cater to these needs more people will come but nah, you got a vision and you're sticking to it i love that right exactly well i i'm guessing that you have learned a lot in this journey especially with growing the wrestling federation to where it's at Mm -hmm. now lessons learned are there any lessons that you have learned either through content creation or specifically with the federation that you have taken into your everyday life yeah uh i actually have because one of the i just recently got promoted back in april uh Mm -hmm. to a team lead position and it's funny that ever since like i've always had an issue with speaking publicly i always got really nervous Mm -hmm. my hands would get sweaty i would start you know kind of stumbling over my words a lot i was never really sure of myself so i never really went into interviews confident i was always super nervous you know I would just be real anxious the whole mm-hmm. time, but I feel like I really killed this last interview for this promotion because Twitch prepared me because I'm so used to talking to people. I'm so used to managing people, you know, assistant blue with managing uh, our communities. We've had some, some hard decisions that we've had to make and mm-hmm. being able to go through that kind of help prepare me for this job that I have now because I deal with so many different people. I deal with so many different personalities uh, on a daily basis and learning how to manage people is a skill set that you can only learn by going through those things. So I'm glad that I was able to prepare myself in a sense with the things that we've been having to deal with because we've had to, you know, pretty much excommunicate community members for you know, making the community unsafe for, you know, whatever reason. So we've had to have a bunch of hard conversations. We've had to Mm -hmm. make swift decisions that, you know, hurt at the time, but we knew that they were the right thing to be done. Right. Uh, So being able to go through that and experience that and learn from it and grow from it kind of helped me with this role that I'm in now, because I have to make some of those same, you know, type decisions. Of course, not on such a scale as excommunicating someone, but, (laughs) but, you know, saying, Hey, no, you can't go home early. (laughs) Exactly. It's way easier to make that decision. You're like, nah, (laughs) exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. I've been, I was telling people when I first became one, I used to do the manager thing, like be, being a streamer, ha- having your own community, running mm-hmm. your own discord channel, being mods and other people's channel. Like that's all cheat code shit for real life, facts, because facts. I feel like as a streamer, especially nowadays, we deal with some, some shit that just would not happen in real life. <laughs> it's unreal actually. Right. And so when you, <laughs> when you deal with that, like at night or during your your streamer world like dealing with people still and shit in the break room he's like all right man like let's be real here just <laughs> like that situation right. is easy to handle so yeah i right. i never thought about it like that but that's a great that's a great life lesson to learn from content creation facts facts yeah i've definitely been using it to my advantage uh and it's, it's helped a lot it's helped a lot because uh my manager is not the best people person Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, you know, it's tougher for people to go to him about things, but I'm able to, you know, provide that, that go between of team lead and manager. So they can come to me about those things. I'm able to communicate that or communicate their feelings to him Mm -hmm. and vice versa, you know, exactly. It's it's made the morale of our team like go up tremendously because now they know they can come to me and talk about those things that they felt like he was 
unapproachable uh, about. So it's, it's been a good time. It's been a man, good time. Talk your shit. That's what I'm talking about, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. This, ah, uh, you're breaking joy to my heart, man. I love this. <laughs> uh, let me stop playing. Uh, words of advice. If I came to you and I was like, yo, I'm a new, I'm a new dude on the scene and I'm trying to mm-hmm. create content. I'm not even going to put it in streaming or YouTube or whatever. What type of advice would you give somebody and their first bat out. So for me, if someone were to come to me, you know, wanting to start whatever, the mm-hmm. first advice I would give them is to start. Because a lot of times we'll get caught up in, oh, I don't have this, or I don't have that, or I feel like I, I need to do this first, or maybe I need to, you know, have a plan first. That's not necessarily the case all the time. Just start and Try to figure things out along the way because it's okay to make mistakes. We all make mistakes, but you should learn from them and not waddle in those mistakes. Because a lot of times we'll we'll do that. We'll beat ourselves up about something that we we did or we you know we made the wrong decision. But you got to just learn from them and keep pushing. Also, don't worry about the numbers. Right. Just be consistent, and most importantly, be you. Be one hundred percent you, and the people that are for you will be for you. One thing I never wanted to do with my content is, you know, to become a character, even though I essentially play a character now as my, you know, commentary self, my right. uh-huh. but I'm still me at the end of it, you know? Exactly. I'm not pretending to be someone I'm not. So anytime someone comes to my stream, I'm not someone else or, you know, I got, dang, I got to, you know, put on this mm-hmm. and you know, so that I can be this. No, I'm, I'm me. I'm always me. So you will know what to expect whenever you get there. So that's one thing I would definitely tell someone who wanted to start this journey. Just do it. Be yourself. Be consistent. Perfect. I love it. And again, with the consistency, it not only removes choices that you don't need to make. And I keep saying choices because honestly, for me, if I have a bunch of choices on the plate, it's going to paralyze me. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. And I ain't going right. to do shit. Most of the time. Right. So right. <laughs> if I cut those choices out, I'm like, all right. All I got to do is this. That's easy. Let's right. go. Exactly. Exactly. That's awesome. Well, Coburg, again, thank you for blessing me with not only the behind the scenes of mouth, because just how that whole machine runs is fascinating to me. So I'm definitely going to be hitting you up uh, some more. I'm gonna be like, hey, man, how, do, how's this, how does this work? <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> if uh, the people want to check the show out from themselves, where can they find your content? I'm everywhere. Coburg nine. You can find some mouth content on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. There's a little on YouTube. We're still trying to hammer things out as far as the YouTube space goes. But my primary uh, space that you can find me is twitch.tv slash Colberg9. We're there every Wednesday at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern for Mouth Emergence. We're every Friday uh, for Mouth After Dark at 11 p.m. Eastern. And then once a month, we do a premium live event, usually on the weekend. So either a Saturday or Sunday, depending on what I got going on or what WWE has going on. Because with Mouth, now I foster the community that wants to see what the other things are doing Mm -hmm. or what the other promotions are doing. So they'll sit in Discord and watch WWE and be like, hey, I feel like Triple H is in your notebook because that's the same thing you did last week. (laughs) So it's been fun (laughs) watching that and seeing them try to compare mouth to WWE. It's like, oh, no, Colbert would have never booked that match. Hell yeah. (laughs) I love that. Again, check out this man's content. I think you have something super special. I I know you know, but from the outside looking in, what you're doing is amazing. And I can't wait to see the next levels of the rest of the Federation and like what happens. Keep it up, man. Keep up the good work. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate yeah, no problem. That. If you know anybody out there who loves to hear conversations like these and more from creators of all walks, I've had people who are VTubers, have people who barely stream, but they only do TikTok. All creators are welcome. These conversations have been dope. Share the podcast with them. Let them know that Uploaded and Unfiltered is on your podcast catcher of choice. I think that's what that app is called. YouTube, Google, Apple, Spotify, we everywhere. I would appreciate it. Leave me a review and uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Outside of that, once again, Goldberg, thank you for doing this. I appreciate you. I cannot wait to see what the uh, next season of Mouth they hold for our, everybody involved. <laughs> nah, man, we cooking. I'm excited. I'm very excited. Hell yeah. 
with that, uh, I'm going to let y'all go. Thank you for listening. I appreciate you as always. And as always, protect your mental, keep creating content, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.